Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> dear participants, ladies and gentlemen. With deep and sincere condolences on the loss of Mr. Abdulaziz Saud al Bapteyn, I am certain that this conference will push his peace mission forward. Through this presentation, please allow me to describe in short the goal of my research that I will be published. Debates at the level of state, leaders, international organizations, and experts in the field of economy and social policies about the impact of economic development on the level of well-being of the population of each country have been at the center of attention for the last 30 years. At the heart of this debate lies the relationship between individual health and collective well-being, one of the most debated problems in the theories of today's economic thought. This has led to wealth economics being one of the relatively newest current of economic science today. In this context, the economic theories of notable Nobel laureates such as Lewis, Harold Donner, Rostov, etc., primarily uh, rely on GDP growth for assessing a country's development are contrasted with another group, including Nobel laureates, Amartisen, and further elaborated by Stiglitz. This later group focused not only on the theoretical analysis of economic system, but also on developing theoretical concepts and practical indicators for elements of welfare economic to better measure economic happiness, broadening the spectrum of indicators related to assessing a country's economic and social condition. The ongoing debate seeks answer and solution to key questions. Is it true that by ensuring well-being we guarantee happiness? Is it only the indicators of economic growth, GDP, that should be considered to evaluate the economic and social development of society or a country? Or should we also analyze indicators and the other elements of economic development and social existence such as level of well-being and happiness index, economic development of environmental economy, blue economy, circular economy, health, life expense, and see education, the level of technology development and digitalization, political rights and freedom, the culture and the intellectual, etc. In this debate, most authors build a new form of judging the functioning of the economic system away from the Marxist concept of scientific socialism, where welfare for all was the main goal of the system. Thus, the first group think that general well-being necessarily depends on the individualism of man and his freedom in the market, while the second group tries to argue that, that the deepening of inequalities in the destruction of the social basis of social existence and the main factor of changing system. In fact, focusing exclusively on economic aspects, such as income and the GDP growth, certainly makes it easier to analyze, analyze development and compare between countries, but it does not represent a completely analysis. It is already evident that GDP and the level of satisfaction of the individual in the free market are often in real contradiction. In the last 30 years, the issue of pre-basic inequality became a problem during the transformation that the post-Berlin Wall countries underwent. Here, the inequality created by very rapid growth became a concern. Albania did not escape this issue. Therefore, a new model of post-transition economic development became more than necessary, as emphasized by the distinguished Nobel laureate Joseph Stiglitz, the transition from communism to market economy represents one of the most important experiments of all times. 
All scientists agree on the thing. GDP, gross domestic product, is not a sufficient indicator to determine economic development. Now, everyone is convinced the alternative indicators are needed. Equally problematic is the fact that the GDP does not encompass many factors that measure economic happiness because they are not easily measurable in economic terms. For this reason, the search for alternative indicators has, been, has became imperative such as Human Development Index, Ecological Development Index, Index of Sustainable Economic Well-Being, Genuine Progress Indicators, and others. The Benessere Eque Sustainable Index, presented by Italia Institute of Statistics in 2010, stands as one of the most tangible indicators of sustainable development. The BES Index incorporates 130 indicators at the national level that encompass 12 different dimensions or areas. Specifically, these areas include health, education and training, work and the balance between working time and free time, economic welfare, social relation, public institution and policies, safety, subjective well-being, landscape and cultural heritage, environment, research and innovation, and service quality. Dear participants, this forum invites debate on policies and priorities that will be fundamental to the future model of economic and social development in both developed and developing countries. They form the basis for the construction of new indexes to measure new elements of assessing the happiness and satisfaction of the population in the key countries that define global economic development overall and industrial development in particular. If we examine the data of this index for some of the key countries in Europe, we can say that Norway consistently ranks first, followed by Ireland, which compared to a year ago has increased by seven levels. Switzerland remained the third consistently. It is noteworthy that in 2020, in the peak of the pandemic, Germany ranked sixth, losing three levels. Denmark is in the 10th place, losing six levels, and England is in the 13th place. If you observe the GDP of these countries, you will see completely different ranking where economic differences are very significant. If someone is special, a specialist in the field of economic believes that only one indicator should define a phenomenon, then economic analysis will be dry, spiritless, and should define uh, sorry, and above all, inhuman. Let's begin to think about society, not merely in economic terms, because everyone will be more interested in measuring our happiness and above all, all the economic happiness of society. Among the most widely recognized economic models, everyone now acknowledges that a sustainable growth system is the key to achieving all objectives by 2030. As a measure indicator for assessing well-being and happiness of peoples, the UN has developed indicators for this main direction. No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduce it in qualities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institution, partnership for the goals. Sustainable development is about meeting the present human, environmental, social, and economic needs without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. With a growing population and increasing demand for solutions 
globally, sustainable development is one of the greatest challenges facing the world today, subject to much debate, debate among politicians and business leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, in this time, there are some ways very important, as it, they are green or green transition or green economy, good jobs in services, new policies for industrialization, and uh, developing the agriculture. Thank you very much.